I.O. or input-output is what modern programs do. Specifically, they do input, process, output. I'm going to show you a more in-depth example of this using C Sharp in the Windows environment. Wasn't there a song lyric from a famous unnamed movie studio? I.O. I.O. It's off to work I go. Yeah, that was it. Alrighty, I got an example here called flooring. Let me open it up. And in this example, now let's see, first of all, I don't care about the scaling. Let me close that. In this example, I've got three inputs, length, width, cost per square foot. I've got three outputs, square feet, the total cost of that room, and then the grand total of multiple rooms. I'm not going to be doing grand total in this example program, but I am going to be going through the process of inputting these three values, turning them into numbers, doing my calculations in the calculate button, and then calculating my square feet, calculating the cost of the room, and displaying those back into these two labels. So we need to pay attention to the names of these objects so that we know what they're called in our code because that's how we have to refer to them. So just for example, this is txt length, txt width, WID, I abbreviated, and txt cost square foot, txt standing for text box. Now here we have label square feet, LBL square feet, and label room cost. That's our players. Let me run the program, show you what it's all about. Pull it onto the screen here. And I could create, you know, a room 15 feet in length by 10 feet wide. And we're going to put some flooring in here that is $5.95. Excuse me, $95 a square foot and I can hit calculate and you see I have 150 square feet with I'm only showing one decimal place here that's by design and the total cost with the dollar sign is eight hundred ninety two dollars and fifty cents now by the way if I did a bigger room and more expensive flooring and hit calculate so now we have 300 square feet and you see that when it's displaying this dollars and cents or currency it's putting a comma every three digits and it's rounding it off to the nearest two decimal places which in this case is zero now let me hit my exit button and we can jump into the calculate button so a few things about writing your program it's good to have a header at the top just telling everybody what's going on with the program. So we do comments in C Sharp by doing forward slashes, a double forward slash. I'm not going to do the C style, which is slash asterisk, and then later on you have to do asterisk slash. Name of the program, who wrote it, that's me. Some people call me Mike. Quick description, and then what I really like to do on my Descriptions is what are my inputs? The length and width of the room and the cost per square feet. That's my inputs. What are my outputs? The, the square foot of the room and the cost of that room. Now, if I come down to where everything's actually happening, it is in button calculate click. So I have created five variables. And once again, a variable is a named memory location in random access memory that is of a certain type. I've made all of these decimal. That means they can hold dollars and cents very well. So decimal is our workhorse in, in C Sharp. It works really well for the types of things we're going to do. Now, why did I create five of these? Well, you remember. I had a text box called TXT length, L-E-N, 
this is going to take the input from that text box and hold it as a number. This is going to take the input from the text box TXT width as a number. And then this is going to take that third text box cost per square foot. So these are my inputs. And once again, we can see the three inputs right here. It's not a coincidence. And then my outputs are desk room square feet and desk room cost. Now, I could have named these variables anything I wanted. I could have named this uh, Bubba if I wanted, but Bubba is not a very descriptive name. Okay. And the reason I named it, and I'm going to hit my undo here. Undo, 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 undo. There we are. The reason I named it desk length is, first of all, I named it DEC to remind me this is a decimal data type. It's set aside enough random, uh, random access memory to hold a decimal. And LEN is for length. And I also like to put a comment off to the side of each of my declarations of variables where I create the variables just to tell me what it is. Okay, in this case, there's only five of them. It, it's, it's pretty straightforward, okay? I could probably get away with calling them A, B, C, D, E, F. But giving your variables descriptive names is a habit of a good programmer, okay? If you have a bigger program with 50 variables and you start at A and you work yourself to Z and then you go A, 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 B, A, C, guess what? You are not going to remember what those variables are, so give them meaningful names. Don't worry too much if they're long because you can do this thing called copy and paste, so you don't have to type the whole things in. Also, Visual Studio is pretty smart. If I start typing something, like if I say des l, the only thing in my program that begins with des l is des length. So now I can hit my space bar and it will auto complete that. Now, of course, I don't want this right here. In fact, I don't want these blank lines right here. So let's look at what this program is doing. And then I'll step through it in the debugger so we can actually see it running. This is doing my input. This is taking the value from the text box txt length. Remember, dot text is the property. That, that lets me access whatever the user typed in. So they typed a string into that text box. It's not a number. Then I'm saying parse it into a decimal turn it from a string into a number, and then finally the assignment operator right here says put it into desk length. So that inputs from the text box the length of the room. Okay, rinse and repeat. Now I've got to get the width from the other text box, from the next text box. Same thing. I go get it from the text box by its name. I've got to access the dot text property to get what the user typed into it. I'm going to parse it into a decimal, put it into the memory location named des width or width. Okay. Now, rinse and repeat to get the cost per square foot. Okay. Now we got to do some calculations. So, how do we get the square feet of the room? Well, that's length times width. And in programming, just like in Excel, we use the asterisk operator to stand for multiply because if you had the letter X, the compiler, C Sharp, Visual Basic, C++, Java, whatever, could not figure out if X meant multiply, or is that the name of a variable? Because I could create a variable named X. But length times width, it's going to do that math on these two decimal numbers and put the answer into des room square foot. Now that's in random access memory. It cannot be seen on the screen yet. How do we get the cost? Well, that's the number of square feet that we just calculated on the previous line times the cost per square foot. So we multiply those two together and put that into des room cost. That's my calculations and the order I do it in matters because we have to have a valid value for des room square feet before we try to calculate the square feet. If, if, if I was to have this right here and put it down here, I'm going to get a cost of zero 
because at the time it ran this line of code, desk room square feet is going to have a zero in it. Or in this case, it's saying unassigned local variable. You haven't put anything into this variable before you're trying to use it. So obviously I want this up here and then everything's happy. Now finally, I've got my answers. Room, desk room square feet, desk room cost. I need to put it into the labels on the screen. My labels are label square feet and label room cost. I need to put these values on the screen so the user can see it. I have to take this decimal, turn it back into a string, and then you see a parameter inside those parentheses. So quote in one unquote says put this in, convert it to a string, do it in number format, so it's going to format it to look pretty. It's going to put a comma every three decimal places every three digits, excuse me, and it's only going to have one decimal place. You see the one right there? If I left this off, it, it would be two decimal places. That's the default. But I only wanted one to show because who cares if it's 150.25 square feet? In fact, do we really care about the fraction of square feet anyway? I could come here and just say N0 and have no, no decimal place, nothing after the decimal place. Round it off to the nearest square foot. Then we're going to take the room cost. We have to turn it back into a string, but I want to display it in currency style. And currency style with nothing behind it, just a C, that means two decimal places. Okay? Well, let's watch this in action. So I'm going to come here to line 49 and click in the gray bar, and I get a red circle, and the whole line becomes red. That is a breakpoint. So when I run my program, it will pause on before it runs this line of code. So now we're ready to run it and see what's going on. I'm going to come up here and hit my Start button. No, no, I'm not. First thing I'm going to do is come over here and hit Save All. Save All is my really good friend. Save your program early and often. Okay, now it's saved. Now I can start my program. And here it is. So let's put some values in there. Length is 15 feet. Width is 10 feet. $5.95. And I'll hit Calculate. Now you see my program has paused just before running this line of code where I put my breakpoint. If I hold my mouse over dot text of txt length, you see it has a value of 15. It's a string because you see quote 15 unquote. That's how I know it's a string. Desk length right now has a value of 0. It has a value of 0 because this line of code has not been run yet. So I'm going to come up to step over on my debug menu, and I could do this with function key F10. I'm not going to hit F10 right now because that would end my recording, and I don't want to do that because F10 is the hotkey for Camtasia Studio Stop Recording. So instead, I'm going to hit step over right here on the toolbar. So now it's run this line of code, and you can see desk length has a value of 15. Same thing here on width. It has a value of 10 in the text box in the text property. It has a value of 10. Width has nothing yet because we haven't run it. So I'll step over that line of code and I'll step over this line of code. So now you can see we have our three inputs. We have 15 for length. We have 10 for width. And our cost is 595 a square foot. Now we're going to do our calculations, okay? So we have length and width. Length has a value of 15, width has a value of 10. Square feet currently has a value of 0 until I run the line of code. I run it. Now you see we have 150 square feet. 15 times 10 is 150. And rinse and repeat, run the next line of code. Now you can see room cost is 150 times 595. And the answer to that is 
$892.50, but nothing has been put on the screen yet because my labels are empty. I have to run this line of code. I have to take desk square feet, which is 150, turn it into a string, so I'll say step over, and now you see the text property of label square feet has 150, with no decimal place, by the way, because I said in zero. And then we'll hit F10, and we ran this line of code. So now we see label room cost now holds 892. So we've run the entire sub. It's right here at the end of the sub. If I just come up to my triangle and say continue, then my program will, instead of single stepping, will run continuously until it hits a breakpoint again. So now you can see my answers are displayed in the two labels. If I was to come back here and, you know, let's say, you know, Bill Gates has his ballroom and he wants to redo it in Italian marble at $39 and 95 cents. Now we couldn't just make it 40 or 39 because it's much more effective in marketing if you make it dot 95. You know, the car is going to be $28,995.99. They, they just couldn't make it 29,000 or 30,000 for God's sake. Anyway, here we are 39.95. And if I hit calculate, it's going to hit my breakpoint again. So let's do my inputs. Step over, step over, step over. So I have 200 for length. My width is 50. My cost per square foot is $39.95. I'll say step over, step over. I have 10,000 square feet. This room's going to cost a little bit. And the room's going to be a lot of money. It's going to be easier to see in the label. So let's step over, step over. So in the label, you can see it's 300 and... Three hundred and ninety-nine thousand five hundred. That's bigger than a bread basket. But you know, Bill Gates can afford that. So now I'm going to tell it to continue, and we can see our answers are formatted nicely on the screen. So this is number format with zero decimal places. See, we've got the comma there to make it more readable. It's much more readable here with the currency with the comma, leading dollar sign, and two decimal places because that's what I told it to do. Now I can come over here and hit my exit button, and exit's real simple. That's just application.exit. Other problems that you would see with this program, by the way, I'm going to turn off this breakpoint. I'm going to come over to this circle, turn that off. I'm going to start the program. Let me drag it back onto the screen where you can see it, and we'll say the length of the room is Bubba. The width is 10. The cost is 5. 95. And I say calculate. Program's going to crash because it's trying to parse Bubba into a number. The string Bubba, it cannot be done. So that is a system format exception unhandled. And we're going to learn how to handle these typos for our users in another video. So that is a simplified look at doing some input, getting our values from the text boxes using decimal.pars, doing our calculations, and then using toString to put our answers into the labels. Now, where are we going to go with this program? Well, we've got to calculate the grand total of all the rooms if we do multiple rooms, and we want to handle these format exceptions on input, but those will be later videos. Thanks a lot. Take care.